Plan B is to get really familiar with non-opioid analgesics for pain if people are uncomfortable writing for opioids. But I get concerned because if opioids are used correctly and in the correct situation, I don't think it's a bad thing. We just have to be careful about how we use them. And so being really familiar, good patient assessment, and picking the right drug for the right type of pain is a first place to start. I think we need to group together and push back against that ourselves too because really when it comes down to it, um, the patient is really who we should have our primary focus on, not what the insurance company says that we should do for our patients. So I think if people are willing to have a conversation with an insurance company or write a letter or fill out that prior authorization because a lot of times that's what they're asking for um, to get what needs to be done done, we would have a place to start. I think if our goal was elimination of pain, then we're setting ourselves up for failure because in my practice, we always tell people, I will probably not be able to get your pain to a zero, but I can help you function better in life. So functionality would be the primary goal and it's just getting everyone involved in the care to buy in because it takes more than just a medication to truly treat a patient's pain. We have to think about what else is affecting their pain. Do they need to talk to somebody? Do we need to figure out how to get them some physical therapy? Are there other alternative methods for pain control that we can have people do like massage or acupuncture? So it's a, it's a big, solution, but I think functionality should be what we focus on because it's amazing what you see. When you get to that place, people may still rate their pain the same number, but they tell you, oh, but now I can walk down the hall, or I can go get my mail, I can walk my dog, I can play on the floor with my kids, and I'm not falling asleep all the time. So that would be my, that would be my goal, would be functionality. Currently, there's an exception for palliative care and cancer patients or, or chronic disease states, but if that exception wasn't there, it would already be affecting our care because of these limits. We have so many people that are on high doses of opioids and they have these limit caps that we're getting faxes all the time that are saying, you need to decrease this, you need to decrease, but that, that might not be the best thing for our patients. So it really inhibits us from taking very good care of our patients if we have caps on what we can do for opioids. And it's the patients that suffer, it's not us. It's that all of a sudden then they can't get what they need and they're running out of medications and they're, you know, if they've been on them for years, they're having symptoms of withdrawal because their body is not, they've become dependent on them. And so we're really hurting them by capping things, but it really does impact us because we have a lot of people that are on higher than the recommended, the new cap recommended doses of opioids. I would say it is a great alternative for neuropathic pain. It's a great way to decrease someone's opioid use if they're on very, very high doses. It can be very effective at getting those doses lower um, and to not be afraid of it. <laughs>